What's up, YouTube? This is your boy Rashawn Bob and White, RB Dubs, coming in at you guys again with another video. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Well, today's video um, is a very interesting one. I so before I uh, started filming this video, I posted on my Snapchat that um, Union is college is back with the nonsense, and I was dropping a video today. And you know, I had a lot of people ask me, you know, what happened? What's going on? And I told them all that I'll explain it in the video. I explained the video at that time. I was still doing, you know, research on what I wanted to say in the video. And, you know, I basically told them that I would explain it all in the video. So this topic is about President David Harris. Now, um, a friend sent me a, you know, a clip of, it was like a news, news show um, on TV that he was watching. And it showed President Harris, and it showed like at the bottom in words a statement that he had made, which was a very like a very a one that called for some attention. Man, the statement that he had made was that he said that a campus is not the place for free speech. A friend first uh, sent me this uh, this clip that he was watching on television. Uh, I was very like I was just very like confused because you know. Like why why would our president be opposed to free speech? I'm saying like these are like the first thoughts that came into my head. But then like, you know, doing some further research on it, you know, and then seeing like his reasoning behind it, um, you know, it was it kind of shed more light on, you know, uh, the the statement in itself. But you know, the wording of like how he explained his reasoning behind it was still a bit confusing to me. At, you know, I just feel like that he could have said it differently. Like, I just don't think that sounds right that college campuses aren't a place for free speech. I guess he's, like, I guess he's trying to say like you can't just invite anyone on a college campus to speak. But like, when you hear that, it's like, you know, it just doesn't sound like the way he's trying to put it, you know, that a college campus isn't a place for free speech. It just kind of sounds like I feel like that statement in itself would make people kind of like upset or, you know, saying like, oh, so I can't speak my, you know, opinions out openly and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of students will feel that way too. And that's like, that's the way I felt about it when I first heard it. Like, what do you, what do you mean a college campus isn't a place for free speech? So like, even if those speeches, like, even if those opinions aren't ones that you certainly believe in, I feel like, you know, colleges is a place where you can you know express your opinions and you know you have to be open to you know hearing opposition to those opinions but uh, i feel like college is a place to hear those differing opinions and then to say that college isn't a place for free speech i don't know it was just it was just very perplexing to me president trump signed an executive order which holds colleges accountable for protecting free speech um the statement that the statement that he had made was that if you know colleges aren't allowing you to if higher institutions aren't allowing you to speak then we will not give them money it's that simple so essentially what this executive order does is that it takes away funding from colleges that i guess president trump and you know the white house sees that they are not uh holding or they're not protecting free speech or they are not allowing people to speak and you know this executive order was basically put into place because they trump and you know white house they feel that higher institutions are you know more so bringing up liberal perspectives and sort of like not sort of but they he feels like they're bringing up liberal perspectives and putting down conservative ones in other words uh, he feels, as many of other feel, that a lot of higher institutions are are exhibiting liberal bias, and this is a, this is a phrase that I came upon in my research, and this is why this executive order was put in place, and this is why David Harris, you know, made this made this statement. The president wrote a op-ed in which he, you know, stated his reasonings behind his statement, and I'll definitely be sure to. Link that link that article in the description box below. But I just wanted to essentially take out two parts of what he had written that were 
particularly interesting to me and that I wanted to speak about. So one statement that he had made was, well, one, you know, one part of the article said, um, why would a college president, especially one who has not already announced his retirement, make such a statement? It is not because I think college campuses should be safe havens from voices on the left and right that violate what I've learned and what I believe. My opposition is just as strong when it comes to free speech arguments and support of voices that affirm my beliefs. The, the next statement I want to take out is, free speech in its purest form is an exercise in what is achieved when a person yells of you and then leaves, after which someone with an opposing perspective does the same. The speakers do not grow as a result of the experience an audience has no opportunity to probe the opposing points of view. Such an exercise is guaranteed by the Constitution and I wholeheartedly support the exercise of free speech in public spaces. On campuses, however, we must strive for something more than free speech. Our mission requires that we seek what I refer to as in constructive engagement. It is not enough for individuals to speak freely. We must also find myriad ways to put a range of views in the conversation with one another. Uh, that was interesting, the point he made about free speech in its purest form, you know, being that, you know, one person just says their point and then leaves and the other person does the same and that in that interaction, no one gets really gets anything out of that interaction. And then with constructive engagement, what's he's, what he's essentially saying is what's better with what he calls constructive engagement is that not only do does a person you know state their belief but people hearing that belief you know hearing that person state their made their statement about their belief first of all that person has to back up that belief you know with evidence you know supporting why they that belief is believed to be true why they believe that belief is true and then also back up that was they also have to you know be able to take questions from people and essentially not bash people for having different opinions than them. And then my opinion on that is like, isn't that free speech? Like I'm trying to, you know, reading the, the article on what on President Harris reasoning for a statement, I kind of felt it was confusing. Like maybe I was, you know, missing something. Maybe I wasn't reading it correctly, but I, I'm having trouble finding the difference between constructive engagement and free speech. I kind of feel like they're the same thing. Uh, Cause when I think of free speech, I think of someone like, you know, stating their opinions openly. But I also, I do also think about, you know, people opposing those opinions. I feel like the opposition of opinions is also a part of free speech. So I'm kind of having trouble understanding the difference between free speech and constructive engagement. And the point of this video is that I want you guys to, you know, perhaps read this article and then perhaps let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think there's a difference between constructive engagement and free speech based on what President Harris is saying? Because he's essentially saying that, you know, the difference between free speech and constructive engagement is that you don't have that, first of all, you don't have that, um, the audience like asking you questions or asking the person who stayed in there belief questions and you don't have that um, interaction. So with, he's saying with constructive engagement, you get more out of the experience, you come away with learning something rather than just stating your perspective and then leaving. I never thought about free speech that way, that you just state your perspective and then leave. Always thought that stating your statement and also in return receiving oppositions to your statements is what's qualified as free speech. So that's why I just, I wanted to share this, you know, this statement and this article, you know, on reasoning, on President Harris reasoning first statement with you guys, because I, I really found it very interesting. And, you know, with that, uh, um, he's also, there's also an event happening here on campus that is um, essentially, you know, following this constructive engagement format. The school has started this whole speaker series that is focused on this constructive engagement idea introduced by President Harris. The event is titled the, the Gift of Our Wounds, Finding Forgiveness After Hate. And this event is happening on campus on April 29th. And it essentially features a, you know, a discussion between, well, that f and then the speakers are one whose father was killed in a mass shooting at a temple. And then the, the other speaker is a former white supremacist and was the leader of a big white supremacist group. 
And I also found that very interesting because essentially, you know, Union College, you know, they have the ability to basically uh, turn away people who they, you know, don't want to speak at the college, especially based on um, President Harris's statement. You know, they can decide who they want to speak and who don't. And, you know, I just find it interesting that they have, that this is starting off this series, that um, one of the people, you have one of the people who's a former white supremacist, another person who is, you know, whose father was killed in a mass shooting. So this is very interesting starting off the series. And you definitely have a, you know, a wide range of perspectives between these two individuals. And these two individuals also reading, they even came together and, you know, wrote a piece, wrote a book together. And I just think this is very, very interesting that you have these two completely different perspectives coming together for this constructive engagement, um, this constructive engagement speaker series. And I can say that I am interested in, you know, how this is going forward. And, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just uh, really interested in, you know, how President Harris explained his statement because his statement sounded crazy at first, you know, when you first hear it. But then, like, I guess you can kind of see where he's coming from with, you know, what he's saying. You can kind of see it. But like me as an individual, I just felt like his state, his uh, explanation was kind of, you know, confusing. That's all I wanted to, you know, say about that. And I don't want this video to be too long. I don't want to ramble on too much. But... I just want you guys to let me know, read the article, read what he said about his statement, and then let me know what you guys think, what's your opinion, and what do you believe, you know, what's the difference between constructive engagement and free speech, is there a difference? And so I want you guys to let me know what you think, and, you know, I put on a snap that this, that Union College was back with uh, nonsense. It's not really nonsense, but like, it's, it's just a very interesting, you know, very interesting statement, and, you know, it's just like, like I said, the statement was blowing me away at first, but then like hearing it, it like, you know, made everything a bit more, a little bit more clearer. So thank you guys for watching this video and, you know, I'll definitely hit that like button and comment down below your opinions and thoughts. And last but not least, subscribe to the channel. That definitely helps me out a ton. And I appreciate you guys watching the video. This is your boy, Rashawn Baldwin, RB Dubs. I'm out of here.